Alarm Manager is a Windows program developed by Accentria primarily as a tool for collecting and displaying SNMP trap alarms sent by Accentria products. If you don't know what an SNMP trap is, well, this is something which is covered in another training video. For now, all you need to know is that it is a commonly used network alarm message protocol. Alarm Manager can be downloaded by our customers at no charge from the Accentria product information portal located at portal.accentria.com. You will be required to create an account and log in to download the software. Alarm Manager consists primarily of a tree view control over on the left hand side and a list view control on the right hand side. The basic layout of the tree view includes a folder hierarchy into which sites and site groups can be created and managed. The list view will display alarm records from various sites and site groups, depending on which node is selected in the tree view. Each Accentria site controller sending alarms to Alarm Manager is referred to as a site. While normally a site controller is located at some distant equipment location, during training or configuration, the site controller is most likely sitting right next to you on your desk. In Alarm Manager, we still refer to this unit as a site. Every site controller has, as part of its settings, a site name or site ID. This is programmed by you, the administrator, as part of the initial setup for each individual site controller unit. Alarm Manager assigns an incoming alarm to its proper site based on the site ID which is contained inside the alarm message. The site name of the site controller and the site ID of that site in Alarm Manager must match for the alarm record to be correctly associated with the site from which it originated. There are three ways in which new sites can be created in Alarm Manager. First, you can go to the tree view, right mouse click, and select to manually create a site. You must specify the type of Accentria site controller for this site. You must enter the controller's site ID exactly. You specify the name you want to show in the tree view for this site, which is often the same as the site ID, and lastly, you enter the IP address for that particular site. The second way to create a new site is to send an alarm message to Alarm Manager. When Alarm Manager receives an alarm that doesn't correspond to any site in its database, one with the same site ID as the incoming alarm message, a new site is automatically created in the New Sites folder. This newly created site can then be dragged and dropped by you into its appropriate site folder. For now, I'm going to delete this site because I'm now going to show you the third way to create a site. The third way to create a new site in Alarm Manager is to discover the unit on your local LAN using the Find Local Devices feature. Find Local Devices sends a message on your local network which any Accentria site controller responds to with a message containing its site name and basic IP parameters. You can then right mouse click on the newly discovered site controller and add that new site to the tree view. The site appears in the New Sites folder, and you can then drag and drop it to its appropriate site group. Alarm Manager makes it easy for you to browse or telnet to the user interface of any of your site controllers. You can telnet or browse from the Find Local Devices listing, from the Alarm listing, or the Tree View hierarchy itself. The browser option opens your default web browser to the IP address specified for that site. From there, you can log in and control the operation and settings of that site controller. Here in the web interface, we can see much information displayed. Among many other things, we can see the status of each event sensor connected to the site controller unit, its general system settings, and the Ethernet settings. To log out, we simply close the browser. To do the same with Telnet, you first need to set up where Alarm Manager can find your Telnet application. We use and recommend TerraTerm, a free and popular Telnet application you can download from the Internet. To set up Telnet, go to Options, 
set up Telnet configuration, and then browse to and select your Telnet application. This second field allows you to specify how to pass the IP address to the chosen Telnet application, where the IP address is represented by the percent %s symbol. In the case of TerraTerm, we just pass the IP address without any other formatting. But if you needed some other command line formatting, you would just enter that here along with the percent %s symbol. Once this is set up, you can use these same context menus to access your sites from Alarm Manager using your Telnet application. Simply right-click on the unit in Tree View and select Telnet. This launches your Telnet application directly from Alarm Manager. After the Telnet application is launched, you can input the username and password of your unit, then you can configure or work with your unit performing whatever needed tasks are required from its command line interface. Alarms in the list view are either open or closed. The tree view icon associated with each site is red if that site has open alarms, and it is blue if that site has no open alarms. Alarms can be closed or reopened or deleted by selecting one or more alarm records and then clicking the right mouse button and selecting to close or reopen or delete those alarm records. To set up a unit to send alarms to Alarm Manager, you're going to have to know the IP address of your workstation. By clicking on Help, What's My IP Address, you can find out this information. Alarm Manager can be minimized into the system tray of your Windows computer. When minimized, its icon will be red if there are any open alarm records in the system, and green if there are no open alarm records in the system. Alarm Manager has a notification option which can be set to pop up when an alarm message is received. This option can be enabled or disabled either by right mouse clicking on the tree view icon or from the options menu of the application. When an alarm comes in, the pop-up notice looks like this. Clicking on the button in the alarm pop-up notice reopens the application so the new alarm messages can be viewed. One of the special features of the Find Local Devices tool is its ability to discover a site controller connected to your local network, even if that site controller has not yet been assigned an IP address. Using this tool, you can assign an IP to an unassigned unit within the first five minutes after that unit has been power cycled. This saves the work of having to connect to the unit via its serial console port in order to assign these same settings. In this example, I've deleted the IP address, mask, and router settings of this unit and then power cycled it. You can see that we detect this unit in our search, but it has no IP address. By selecting the record and clicking the right mouse button, we choose Setup. Here you can enter the IP address, mask, and router settings and then save them to the unit. Now you see the same unit, but with these IP settings fully assigned. This feature will be very handy, where you have to set up the IP address on your site controllers during the test and configuration stage. This training video is not intended to get into the specifics of how to set up alarms in the site controllers or what options are available via the web or Telnet user interfaces. This is covered in other basic training videos. We're only introducing you to the Alarm Manager application at this point and showing you how it works. Most of our training videos which involve alarms and alarming will use Alarm Manager as a demonstration tool. Therefore, you should be familiar with it. If this is your first time learning about Accentria site controllers and you have not actually set up a unit yet, then you should move on to one of the next videos in this basic video training series to continue your training on Accentria site controller products. Thank you for watching.